hello, hello. My name is Callista, and welcome back to Dragon Age 2. In the last episode, we headed to the Chantry. Apparently, Sebastian has a job for us. Now, before we get to Sebastian, I want to explore. Has anything changed? Has anything been added? Nothing in here. Excuse me. Nothing in here either. Now then, hello. Oh my god. There are forbidden tomes in the Chantry. Is nothing sacred? Is nothing sacred anymore? God damn. How dare they? Forgive me. Oh, oh shit. I'm sorry. Oh no, we're we're gonna get a bollocking, aren't we? No, that's that's not what we want. Not from Elfina. Please, no. Um, I'm not gonna touch the evil tome for now. As I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna get all of them done when I have Meryl in the party. I'm just. Just double checking that there aren't any other codex entries in here. Hello? Oh, we have a great raven feather, huh? There must be ravens living in the rafters. Odd that there wouldn't be doves, but, you know, e even ravens are creatures of the maker and all that gubbins. So, so, why do I feel like we're witnessing the birth of Jack the Ripper here? This is this is what I imagine was what was going through Jack the Ripper's head before he murdered those ladies. That no, oh, no, just run away, run away and pretend we never heard it. Oh, hello, Varric. If you don't mind, nice. And Traste's wisdom. I'm tempted to give that to Amelia just based on the name alone, but let's be honest, it's it's not that great. <laughs> That's rather unfortunate. Nothing on there. Hello? Nothing, really? Ah. You are hiding, hello. The Enigma of Kirkwall. Ironically, the Chantry has the best records on the... It, it, they're, they're, they're. We are off to a fabulous start today, folks. Ironically, the Chantry has the best records on the Imperium occupation that we've found. None of the forbidden texts, which have undoubtedly been destroyed, but many administrative records. In their cold, numbered rows, misery is told. Thousands of slaves passed through the gallows to work the mines or to be shipped elsewhere. The list of elven children is numbing. Three maimed, two mute, and four serviceable. These numbers don't add up. For every thousand slaves that came to Kirkwall, a hundred disappeared. I checked the tax rolls as well, and the discrepancy exists there too if one has the wit to see it. 203 slaves went missing in the Imperium's 312th year. That's just one year. Other records show similar discrepancies. Over centuries, practically a whole civilization of slaves simply disappeared. Hidden inside the cover of a book with curious markings and signed, The Band of Three. I really do hope I find all of the Enigma of Kirkwall texts. I find them so interesting. Now then, we've we've put it off for as long as we can, but oh, we're, we're going to get yelled at by the Grand Cleric. Oh no. no. Hang on. We have a codex entry first. We can put it off for longer. 
The History of the Chantry, Chapter 2. When the prophet Andraste and her husband, Mafarath, arrived at the head of their barbarian horde, southern Tevinta was thrown into chaos. The Imperium had defended against invasions in the past, but now they stood without the protection of their gods, with their army in tatters and their country devastated by the blight. Many felt that the timing of the invasion was yet another of the Maker's miracles in Andraste's campaign to spread his divine word. Andraste was more than simply the wife of a warlord, after all. She was also the betrothed of the Maker. Enraptured by the melodic sound of her voice as she sang to the heavens for guidance, the Maker himself appeared to Andraste and proposed that she come with him leaving behind the flawed world of humanity. In her wisdom, Andraste pleaded with the Maker to return to his people and create paradise in the world of men. The Maker agreed, but only if all of the world would turn away from the worship of false gods and accept the Maker's divine commandments. Armed with the knowledge of the one true God, Andraste began the exalted march into the weakened Imperium. One of the Maker's commandments, that magic should serve man rather than rule over him, was as honey to the souls of the downtrodden of Tevinta, who lived under the thumbs of the Magisters. Word of Andraste's exalted march, of her miracles and military successes, spread far and wide. Those in the Imperium who felt the old gods had abandoned them eagerly listened to the words of the Maker. Those throngs of restless citizens that destroyed temples now did so in the name of the Maker and his prophet, Andraste. As Mafarath's armies conquered the lands of southern Tevinta, so did Andraste's words conquer hearts. It is said that the Maker smiled on the world at the Battle of Valerian Fields, in which the forces of Mathrath challenged and defeated the greatest army Tevinta could muster. The southern reaches of the mighty Imperium now lay at the mercy of barbarians. Faith in the Maker, bolstered by such miracles, threatened to shake the foundations of the Imperium apart. Of course, the human heart is more powerful than the greatest weapon, and when wounded, it is capable of the blackest of deeds. From Tales of the Destruction of Thedas by Brother Genitivi, Chantry Scholar. Now I've I've said many, many times who I think the Maker is. I would just like to clarify, I don't believe there are any gods in the world of Thedas. I think what we would know as a god does not exist. I don't believe... Here's the thing. This is probably because I myself am an atheist, so maybe that is why I am slightly more inclined to be like, the Maker doesn't exist, the Elven Gods were just really powerful mages, so they weren't really gods, the Rano God, the Old Gods, I think, were the Elven Gods, but under different names, yada 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 yada. Like, maybe that is why I am more inclined to believe those things. But personally, I I believe the, the same thing in the world of Thedas. How did the world of Thedas come to be? How did it come to be? Chaos theory, which is what I believe happened with Earth. Things happen because things happen. Nothing willed it. Nothing. There was no divine being who was like, let me make people and land and dinosaurs and puppies. Like, I I don't believe that. If you believe that, good for you. I'm not saying that to tear down your beliefs. Please do not think that's what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm simply saying that I myself do not believe that. And yeah, I've, I've gone over many, many times that I think the maker is Elganarn. I think the old gods are the elven gods. They whispered to Tevinta like, hey, come get us out of the black city where Fenharel locked us up. We totally won't blight you. <laughs> totally not. No, we won't do that. We're not evil. Um, yeah, I, Andraste, I think, was a mage. I'm convinced of it. She had to have been a mage. 
if they're if they come up with a in Dragon Age 4 if they do say no 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 the maker is real there was a divine spirit Andraste was his prophet I, I, I wouldn't how do I put this I'm not an angry atheist I wouldn't put my fist through my monitor and be like, oh, Dragon Age is shit now. Like, I wouldn't do that. I'd be a little disappointed, but I'd be like, aye, it's fantasy. Let's let's keep rolling. I love this world too much to get annoyed by that. Does that make any sense? I hope that makes sense. I thought it would end here. That young lady, Hawk, she decimated Flint Company. No survivors. Yet, now that I know who sent them, it's harder to see their deaths as justice. Death is never justice. My... Hawk, we were just talking about you. Oh, well, you, you don't have to stop on my account. Carry on. I love to eavesdrop. Hawk said sarcastically. You know, I hate it when you do that. Hawk muttered in an angry aside to the dwarf. If, uh, you two have a moment, I've learned who hired Flint Company. The Harrimans, a noble family of Kirkwall. They were my parents' allies. It's hard to believe they betrayed us like this. I, I love that conversation <laughs> between Varric and Hawk. Oh, it's fabulous. Um, uh, the Harrimans, who are they? Tell me about this family. Lord Harriman used to be a good man. But he became rather strange in his dotage. He died some years back. His daughter took over the family, Lady Johane Harriman. They say she's become quite reclusive of late. Hmm. And why exactly would they betray your parents? Any idea why they turned on you? Money? Power? It's hard to say. Lady Harriman was always jealous of my family for being royalty when hers were mere nobility. But I can't imagine that pushing her into outright murder. Hmm. Well, <laughs> time for revenge. Good day, your holiness, or whatever the appropriate term for a, a grand cleric is. No, no. Th also, this isn't, this isn't our revenge. This is his family. We shouldn't be inserting ourselves into this. What, what do you want to do, Sebastian? Is there any peaceful way to resolve this? If you treat the Harrimans like those mercenaries, you could start a war. Go carefully, Sebastian. I must speak with Lady Harriman and find out what drove her to this madness. But I am the last of my line. I should not go alone and make myself a target. This is a good start. He wants to use his words. Um, uh, yeah, we'll go. If I'm standing beside you, that should make her think twice. Again, your interest in my plight humbles me. If you like, I can travel with you until you confront Lady Harriman. Otherwise, you can always find me here in the Chantry. Of course you can come along. Um, hmm. Who, who do I want to bring for this? Um, I'm inclined to keep Aveline. She's a she's the captain of the guard. You know, if things kick off, then you know she can be there to be like, nah, they started it. I'm I'm guard captain. Take me at my word. You know, I think let's let's go for that. Two rogues, a warrior, and a mage. Admit admittedly, they are both ranged. That could be dodgy. Oh well. Um Sebastian. Amelia and Sebastian, have they been interacting in the past three years? And I think I think this is the last time I'm gonna have to do this. So I, I mentioned Amelia didn't leave her house for a year. I mentioned that a lot. When I say she didn't leave her house. I mean she didn't leave her house. She did not go to a single Chantry service for an entire year. That is how depressed she was. Chantry services, they are like 
They are like her favorite thing in the world. Her devotion, her desire to hear the chant. I mentioned this in act one. She goes to like chantry services at minimum twice a week. She'd go every single day if she could. And so the fact that in in the aftermath of Carver's death, she kind of felt, no, I'm, I'm not worthy to hear the chant of light. That I'm, I'm too, I am too guilt filled. I have done too much. I didn't do enough. And I, I don't deserve that. I don't deserve the maker's peace. None of it. I think that, you know, once, once Varric was like, come on, come outside, help Anders out in the clinic, there you go, and, and now we'll go do this, and there we go, she's, she's up and running, there, look at her go, running off into the sunset, screaming about mages being in the circle, oh dear. She did start going to Chantry services again, and what with Sebastian being a brother in the Chantry, I think, I think she spoke to Sebastian quite a bit. She likes Sebastian. He seems like a, a maker-fearing guy and she can get behind that. You could, you could marry the boring guy, Amelia. You could legit marry him and you won't. God damn. Now then, Elfina, hello. I cannot fault Sebastian for wanting to know why an old ally would turn against his parents. But I fear he's too impetuous. He may do something he regrets. Please, go with him. Try to restrain him. If the Harrimans are guilty, they will receive justice from the Viscount. Sebastian need not take their punishment into his own hands. Okay. Okay. Oh. How do we handle the Kunari? Oh no. It seems that Amelia, after years of being like, is the Chantry gonna get on those guys? Is, is, is the Chantry gonna kick these horned heathens out of the city? She's just like, you know what, I'm just gonna ask. I'm gonna ask Elthina, what should I be doing? What should I be thinking? What is the Chantry's stance on the Kunari presence here? Would it help anything for us to get involved? Or is it more likely to light the kindling? If the Kunari act against us, the Templars will defend Kirkwall. Otherwise, we guard ourselves best by waiting. Okay. Okay, if... If that is what the Grand Cleric is saying, I think... If, if I remember this correctly, it's... It's been a while since I've had to look at you know, the, the hierarchy of the Catholic Church. I was raised Roman Catholic. I want to say that a Grand Cleric is the equivalent of a bishop? Maybe? I feel like bishop is an appropriate, you know, comparison. Yeah, this, this isn't just some random ass priest. This is like... A higher up, a high higher up. And if Elthina is saying, just wait, don't do anything against them. Just, if, if they attack us, then okay, we'll get involved. But until that day, just play nice, smile, don't, th don't throw bricks through their windows, don't do any of that. Just be chill. If that's what Elthina is saying, then that's what Amelia will do. How long have you been, Grand Cleric? I became a lay sister here when I was only a girl. My parents died of fever, and I was taken in by the Chantry. Eventually, I took my vows. After I had served for some time, the revered mothers agreed that I should travel to Orlay. The Divine herself appointed me Grand Cleric of Kirkwall. That was near 30 years ago. The Pope? The fantasy Pope gave her her position? That's... That, that is... Ooh. Like, we, we are so close to divinity right now, Amelia is thinking. This lady met the divine and I'm speaking to her. Like, that's... That's insane. You knew my grandparents? 
I dedicated your mother into the Chantry. She was a beautiful baby. Your grandmother was a very proper lady, but she was beside herself that day. And your mother put a fist in my eye. Mother! How could you? God damn it, Leandra. Um... No, no, no. She is helping the city. She's helping the city by doing the maker's work. Please, can you give me your blessing? I'd always welcome your benediction. Andraste, guide your steps in this difficult time. Hey, nice. Also, Sebastian, you have a level. Okie doke. Let's see. Oh, you have 10 ability points. Flipping heck. Let's just deck you out with these. There we go. And, ooh, what do we got? Oof. I don't know. Let's, let's just go for this. There we go. Lovely jubbly. And we have codex entries. Grand Cleric Elfina. We will never have peace unless we try to understand one another. Revered Mother Elfina assumed the mantle of Grand Cleric almost 20 years ago. She is responsible for the spiritual well-being of the Southern Free Marches, everything south of Starkhaven and the Minata River. She has long been a calming presence in the city, renowned for her kindness and generosity. People frequently turn to her to mediate disputes, particularly those involving the powerful Templar Order, over whom she holds authority as the Chantry's ranking representative. Some claim that Elthina's advanced age has rendered her ineffective, and that she allows Knight Commander Meredith more leeway with each passing year. Some are calling on the new divine, Justinia V, to appoint a replacement, but they do so quietly, for Elthina is by far the most beloved priest the city has ever known. Ooh, I find that interesting. Sebastian after the Deep Roads. Sebastian has spent the past three years advancing his campaign to retake Starkhaven. He has been travelling extensively between Kirkwall and the other Free Marches cities, attempting to recruit sufficient allies to build an army. With Amelia securing the Hawk family a place among Kirkwall's nobility, the two have crossed paths a few times. But an exiled prince like Sebastian has far better access than Amelia to the Viscount and other heads of state. So far, I, hmm? what? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm. I was reading the commas in a really weird way. Sorry. So far, though, few families have agreed to support Sebastian with actual troops, leaving him in a difficult position of trying to retake his city with no army. If he can continue using his words, then maybe. I'm, I'm not saying that'd be all that successful, but it, it'd be a start at least. We read that, we read that, we read that, and that. Yes. Da, da, da. I just want to double check that I'm not missing out on any codex entries here. Hmm, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Excellent. Alrighty then. Then let's let's go speak with these Harrimans. See what's up with them. Why why were they harassing Sebastian's harassing Sebastian's family? They killed Sebastian's family. Oh shit. I think that was that lady talking more about her daughter's wedding when her daughter doesn't even have a husband. I I think. I think that's what was going on there. Also, equipment. Sebastian, you have like nothing. Uh, whoops, excuse me. Sorry, buddy. Um, oh, I, mm, I, I could. You are of noble birth. Hello? My father was a chevalier. He had to flee Orlais when his patron was murdered. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have been suited for the life of an Orlesian noblewoman anyway. But surely you wish it had been different, to be a lady of Orlais and not a city guardsman. 
Not for one moment. I'd rather kill a bandit and save a merchant's family than know the correct dance steps and which rouge is in fashion. Oh, that's it, big girl. You tell him. I, I love that only so much. Um, uh, also, I find it interesting how she says chevalier. Because I would say chevalier. Hmm. Um, to be honest, I, I don't think either is necessarily incorrect. I think I'm just saying it the Orlesian way. Uh, I, I could go back to the Hawk Estate and get Sebastian's accessories. However, I'm, I'm pretty sure there is a cutscene waiting for me at the Hawk Estate. So I'm inclined to just leave that for a wee bit. Now then, where, where are we going? This way? Up here, there we go. Alrighty then, knock knock. That's strange. The door's wide open. And not a single guard posted. This is not the Lady Harriman I remember. Well, that's concerning. Hmm. I don't like this. I really don't like this. Okay, we, well, we can't go through there. Can't go through there. There is something very wrong in here. Sebastian, why do you keep having to make this worse? Hello? Yoo-hoo! Well, there's a, there's a door right there. Okay, well, the barrel. If they're not coming to stop us, we might as well take their shit. Because why not? Can't get through there. And can't get through there. More, you lazy son of a bitch. What's taking so long? Flora? Why does no one in this house care what I want? More wine, or I swear I will drown you in the dregs. That sounds familiar. I don't envy anyone in this household tomorrow morning. She doesn't even see us. This is no normal wine. Madam? Madam, are you okay? Do you, do you need assistance? I, I think she does, but she's she's too enamored with the wine. We'll leave her be. Okay, so we've got we've got one drunk lady just chilling out. Give me a minute. So we can't go that way. This is Oh, sh she really wants her goddamn wine. Okay. Yeah, so we came from that way. I need more wine. Anything to quell this pounding in my head. I, I think that's a sign that you should stop. More locks. It must be molten. You, more coins. I want every scrap of gold in this house. Please, Mister. There's nothing to fear. You'll be beautiful. Pour it over her. Don't! You'll kill her! He can't hear me. Perhaps I should be the one. We must end this madness. A, a buddy was... Also, how did you get over there? Was that necessary? That's my question, because... I need more. There shall never be enough. Okay, good for you, buddy. My question was, he looked rather uncomfortable holding the knife to that other elven lady's throat, so he could have just been coming up to you to be like, hey, you're sane, please help me, bam! <laughs> you just knocked him the fuck out. Jesus, you're right. Can I take any of this? No? Okay. Okay, fair dues. Ooh. Flora Harriman's diary. Um, yeah, in a, in a minute. I want the chest. Ooh, hello. 
Male under tunic increases critical chance, Sebastian. There you go, buddy. Now then, where are you at? Flora Harriman's diary. First day of harvest mere. Mother finally began her expansion to the estate today. She brought in two dozen men from the Imperium who I'm sure were slaves, and they've been excavating the hillside behind the house. The dirt is awful. And the noise. Must they shatter every rock in Kirkwall? It's been quiet since lunch though, and Mother is behaving very strangely. She's now talking about stopping the expansion. Just like that, with no explanation. She never tells me anything. Oh dear. That, uh, that does not sound good. Also, the doors are barricaded. Didn't notice that before. Um, so I am out of time for this episode. In the next one, hopefully we can find someone sane in this house and figure out just what is going on. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.